Like this, two threes, four fifths. Bet you we sending that shit. Switch on a glick. Three gon' click till it click. Three seconds, then empty that bitch. Weaving through traffic, three slid in the stinger. Crack me up in that sack and on Pringles. Thumbing through bands got cut. And Glizzy is undefeated, man. Y'all know why he's been undefeated? Because people have been allowing him to put bones on people. And he's been getting away with it. People enjoy listening to him lie and create false narratives. And it's sad, man. It's sad. That's just like people are allowing him to teach them about Islam. Y'all are sitting, people are sitting here allowing Master Splinter, Booty Bandit, Rape Bill Cosby Glizzy, right? To teach them how to be Muslim. And then you believe it and you challenge Muslims on it. Even with Muslims posting the truth but it's sad right but when i hear aunt glizzy talking right all i hear is this watch this watch this Say it with me. Right. Yeah, that's all the fuck I hear. I don't know what y'all hear, right? But on me, that is Aunt Glizzy to me. Like, y'all sit and take messages and, and word and believe and hold on to what the fuck that mental health patient got to say. Well, let's go down the list of all the contradictions Aunt Glizzy gave us in the last few days, few weeks, a few months. <laughs> As you can clearly see, one of the first lies Aunt Glizzy told today was the fact that that was my baby mother. Now, I'm saying, you know, that black, beautiful, clean queen is as beautiful as they come, right? Whoever that woman is on that paper. But for him to say that that was my baby mother lets you know that he was that charged up the lie and create false narratives about sight. Word around town is, y'all better go check on cute food. Let me tell y'all why. Say it with me. <laughs> right. See, I was thinking it. I know you was thinking it. He's the one that created the narrative that Q the Fool was in critical condition in that studio. Q the Fool was alive and well. And then we all know that later on, what did he do? He lied and said that he never said that. He never put the false bone on him. That's who the fuck y'all listen to and believe and take the word and... Do nothing? Damn. Shout Glizzy go to the club, I'm gonna take your shit. Tell Shout do a show in the city, matter of fact. Do a show in the city. I'm gonna take his shit. Fuck you, talking. I can't even do a show here. Y'all niggas gonna link up with the police. Who the fuck going with y'all? The fuck? Y'all niggas gonna link up with the police on my mother. Fuck you, talking about. Do a show. I'm coming to Shot Next Show. Shot Next Show, I'm going on my mother. Wherever Shot Next Show, I'm going to that motherfucker. On GQ, I'm going. You bitch ass niggas. I ain't even gonna say it. I ain't even gonna say it. <laughs> on me. <laughs> That nigga said, if Shaq coming to the city, he gonna take his shit and all this whaling shit, right? On GQ, he put it on. Shaq been back in this city how many times since then, y'all? I'm saying, did anything ever happen to Shaq? Because on, and to my knowledge, Shaq comes into the city and he gets real niggas to hang out with him. You know, he got real street niggas hanging with him. That nigga there? He hangs with off-duty police officers. 
When I say un, you say D. Un, D. Un, D. Cover, brother. <laughs> Rod. Came to your house. You won't ever come to my house and say, Cray, I'm trying to see you. You won't never do that. I came to your house and told you I'm trying to see you. You should have been the first one to swing. You supposed to be the first one to swing because that's your establishment. That's your residence. You won't ever come to Jawan Antonio Johnson house and think I'm not going to swing first. Fuck out of here, kid. You's a bitch. Nobody won't ever drag my mother down the street and I won't blow him up. You's a bitch. Nigga won't ever play, play with me about my brothers and them without me doing anything. You's a bitch. Nigga won't ever tell me I can't go nowhere and I don't go down there. You's a bitch. Well, that was very revealing. <laughs> yeah, that was his own man. Letting the whole world know how much of a bitch nigga he really is, man. See, one thing about him, right? You go to some of my friends, right? You go to anybody that I ever fell out with. And you ask them on some real shit, man. It's like a bitch nigga, man. Can you just do any and everything to cycle around? Like, how are they going to tell you? I'm about, nah. That nigga win, lose, or draw. That nigga going to go. But him? And then to find out, he talks all this gangster shit. Yeah, Bob. I'm going to put a nigga under for Bob. I'm going to do this. Let's ask that nigga who the fuck dragged Bob down the street. Right. When he wouldn't want to give him no gloves for real, but he gives a little fast at the thing. He talked about this other guy. He, I, This guy went to jail. He a bully. The guy that we talk about, he a bully. He be bullying everybody, taking these shoes. So this yellow guy called the unit with him, locked up. He locked up a young guy on the unit. The yellow guy got some good shoes that he want, but he got to make up excuses to take his shoes. The yellow guy cool with people in the unit, so he can't just go straight take his shoes. He got to make up excuses why he took his shoes. So he think like the boy was hot in there. Something he did, something to a young guy. Something long story short, so he ended up taking the shoes, and they end up fighting. He ended up getting out on the young guy. The young guy got sent out the feds to go do his time. Just later on, like some months later, he gets sent out the feds. So as he out the feds, he gets sent out the feds too. But the whole time he got sent to the same jail as the young nigga that he just beat up to the shoes. But the young nigga was there already. He was there first. Okay. So he was already in motion and know what's going on. Well, Pinocchio, let's get into the details of separations in D.C. jail. If you get in a fight or stabbing or altercation with somebody in D.C. jail and the police break it up, it's something called a separation. Those separations from D.C. jail follow you into the federal system. So there is no way I would ever been able to go back around Nardo after I took his shoes. That's one. Two, you fucking liar. Nardo never been to a penitentiary. He been FCIs and Lowe's. I've been to all penitentiaries, bro. Never been on the yard with Nardo. So, those are two facts that you could have easily went and fact-checked before you went live and started making these videos. Well, say it with me, y'all. Right. Stupid nigga. <laughs> oh, he spiked them bottles. On GQ, I spiked a couple bottles with him. I spiked one with him before. The Lord Jones, uh... Back in the day, I ain't gonna say no names, but we, I spiked a bottle with him before my mother. I was just spiking. I, I spiked one bottle with him before. I'm wild. I'm guilty. I ain't gonna lie. He showed me how to do it. Fuck, I know he. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's him admitting to being a rapist. Yep, yep. The great Aunt Glizzy, Bill Cosby Glizzy, that all you follow and love, he just admitted to being a rapist. He said, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm a wild nigga. I spiked the bottle. Right? But let's see what this clown ass nigga says after people come at him the hard way about once lying on shot glizzy and two admitting to being a rapist. Let's see what happens after he finds out he done fucked up. <laughs> watch this, watch this, watch this. 
Yeah, I spiked the water. They didn't know. No, fuck no. She held the bottle. I didn't know it was going to get posted on the blogs and I had to put the whole story out. But now I'm going to give you the extended version to the story. Before the night was over, bro, she was eating a molly off me, bro. Like, it was a molly fest. Y'all looking at this weird. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that's called uh, <laughs> the extended version. <laughs> <laughs> where you add on to and try to justify where you just realize I done fucked up. But let's see some more fuck ups of the great and glizzy that everybody loves to run with every word that he says and the lies that he tells. Let's see. Police try to get you in the interrogation room and question you. Hell yeah. I, was, I done probably been. I told you they subpoenaed me. They uh, subpoenaed me. I probably been in the room. They probably grabbed me like four times. But once you get a lawyer, they can't talk. Once you say, once when my lawyer walking in, you can't talk. They can't talk to me. I wasn't facing no charges or nothing. But at, and towards the end, towards the end, when they was trying to say I murdered them, and uh, that was. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the great lying master magician himself, right? Telling you a story of how he's been in the interrogation room. Right now, five, five, five. Right, four times, four times he's been in there, and then he says he had a lawyer. If he would have got a lawyer from the very beginning, the police would have never had the right to talk to him no more. They would have never had the right. They had everything that they would have had to do or say to him. They would have had to go through that lawyer. But that's him admitting that he's been in there four times. But let him tell it. Later on down the line, when he realized he fucked up by saying that, what he tells everybody, oh, no, I've never been in that room. I got a lawyer. My lawyer went in there for me. And y'all still listening to this lying piece of shit. But let's go. Right. We is pushing peace. This one gets a million views right here. We pushing peace. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> you gonna put the gun down? I put it down. I put it close to you. You can have it, you can have it close to you, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm fighting cases. Slide that motherfucker back to you. Right. <laughs> Let's start there. Let, let, it's let's legal, start though. It's, it's mine. It's legal. Let's look. start there. Let's start there. You good. It's mine. Yeah, this whole motherfucking time, I ain't no hell. That right there is the great Ann Glizzy who y'all love and honor so much that sat there in front of all of us and everybody in front of the, you know, everybody that follows him. And he claimed that, yeah, I whipped out the gun on j Main. I did this and did that. Man, the first two words he said is we are pushing peace. And on top of that, right, he pulled that gun out and put it right on the floor. That is the most defenseless. The most, I don't want any problems or any beef stands that you can take. And then he slid it to the people that he claimed to hate and beefing and all this bullshit with. So, how, which one is it? Did he pull the gun out on J-Main on a, in an aggressive and threatening way? Or did he come in peace? Just like we all just saw. Say it with me. <laughs> Out of my control. First of all, this Puff Daddy. I promise you, I don't mind what gangs I do in the street. This don't. First, this Uncle Buck. This is off my list. This is off my radar right here. I can't do nothing with this. I'ma still. I'ma stand down. So man, shout like oh. So as they go in there, they go back there, but they shut the door. It's a blank. All right. It's a once you. It's a studio. His feet hanging off the balcony. Like he hanging off the balcony. They dangling by his feet. I can't really hear what they saying. I'm like, shot, man, be quiet. Shot, shot, shot. I don't know what's going on. Shot, first of all, shot, go back and help Wale. This is man. He can go back to shot and he must uh, move. I swear to God. Shot, like, man, what they doing? I said, man, they got him over the balcony by his feet. They're like, man, no, nah, no, he don't. That ain't him. Like, show that is him. We knew it was him because we know what type of shoes Wale wore to the studio and we seen them jump up in the air. So, Oh, remember this great lie, <laughs> this great storyteller. We yeah, that boy need to write a book, man, because he's good at lying and making, creating stories and false narratives. But like he said, he's a schizophrenic man. This is a man that hears music in his head. How many times have y'all ever seen him walk in the room humming or singing songs that nobody else hears but him? Well, he's telling a story about. Diddy hanged uh, Wale over the rail. We all know that was a lie. But not only was that a lie, but he sat there in front of everybody and let you know he's lying. He said they went in the room and closed the door. How the hell did he go in the room and close the door, but you were able to see everything you saw?
I was going to say it. I know you want to say it. <laughs> I was going to say it, but I know you want to say it. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> The great Uncle Buckets, Uncle Uncle Throw Up Bucket, because that's the only bucket I saw that day. <laughs> that's the great Uncle Buckets running around telling that the whole motherfucking internet that he was gonna beat this shit all day. He roughing. That's the great Uncle Buckets, y'all. That's the one y'all choose to believe <laughs> the narratives that he give you and the lies that he tell you. That's him right there. Y'all look at y'all might want to go go back and check that out one more time. That's the great Uncle Buckets. Himself. <laughs> call him throw up bucket. That would you call him Wellin Bucket. Hey Slim, we got this rope on that weak ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey Slim, you got that low ass rope on that weak ass. Yeah, true. Right on that back. This <laughs> 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 ass nigga got that low ass rope on that weak ass chain, bro. Yeah, <laughs> rope on this weak shit. God damn, Slim. This weak ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying when he gonna slide though, man. Hey, Barbara, where you at, man? Don't slide. <laughs> hey, folks. Hey, this is my bag, my car, for in this note. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. <laughs> that nigga made all this talk about his shit never being. See, it's a difference for me and him, man. If somebody steals something from me, I don't know who it is. <laughs> Anybody can get stolen from. A thief can steal from you at any given day. However, that bitch nigga and Glizzy had his chain taken from him. Ain't nobody in the history of Washington, a big psych, ever took anything from me. But that bitch ass nigga hides in that house for a reason, man. He's scared to come outside. <laughs> right, see? gentlemen there's a lot of different things that i could show you to discredit you know the word of that lying schizophrenic bipolar man right like the fact that he said uh they were shooting the drake when come to find out gq was killed with a 22 caliber bullet like he said you know he was so hurt that his friend died but he told police and other people that he just happy it wasn't him. Like he said, you know, then we found out that he went in GQ's pocket and stole all GQ's money. But let him tell it, you know, he, you know, none of these things happen. You know, and at the end of the day, let's figure out when he going to go down that court building with me. I still got $5,000, man, to prove that these darker numbers that I have are not fake. That would expose who they love. Feel like I'm dressing a GQ. You fuck niggas hating cause they wanna beat you. I'm looking too sweet, they need pin me a GQ. Uh -huh. On a band, that little boy never could get yeah. you. You fake chains, you bluff. You bluff. Your big brother hot as hell. Give a fuck if that nigga a step. Yo, he got caught to start telling on something. You really promoting a rap? You didn't told on yourself, so you really a rap. Fuck a OG, I stayed on and did it myself. Man, this internet nigga might really be 12. You never broke on the bail. You never had to sleep in the cell. How you let Bobby sleep in the street? Damn, I wish Q was my son. Not how this shit. He walking around with these fake ass chains. I'm out here begging for food. 